Tonight, a team from GHD start the design phase of the water and wastewater project. The latest update on the China government-funded road upgrade project. And Poor House retains the Newey High School Athletics Championship for 2023. Kalo Good evening. I'm Esther Pavihi and welcome to tonight's bulletin of BCN News. Leading our news tonight, the government this week uh, confirmed that the arrival on the island of its new barge. The barge, called Toa Hitahi Alofi, was built in Nandi in Fiji and will help with the work of unloading the cargo boat. Officials from the Ministry of Infrastructure told BCN News that this new custom-built uh, barge cost the government of Niue over $850,000. Here's more. According to the Office of the Minister of Infrastructure, the procurement of this custom-made barge was one of the projects delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. BCN News was able to obtain a short video of the barge as it was being prepared to be transported to Niue. The barge was uh, built by a Kiwi company based in Nandi in Fiji and cost the government more than $850,000. BCN News understands that a blessing ceremony will be held in due course now that the new barge Toa Hitahi Alofi has finally arrived on the island. Last week, the first phase of the uh, major upgrade of the water and wastewater infrastructure project funded by the Australian government was launched by Niue's Minister of Infrastructure, Honourable Crosley Tatui, and Australia's High Commissioner to Niue, Her Excellency Louise Allerton. And this week on Monday, a design team led by engineering firm GHD arrived on the island to start talking to local stakeholders and the community on this feasibility start of the project. Here's more on that story. In October last year, Australia's Foreign Affairs Minister, Senator Penny Wong, announced the support, Australia government's support towards New Air's water and wastewater development and upgrade. This week, a design team arrived to start the fact-finding mission or the feasibility phase of that project. BCN News spoke with team leader Emma Newland of GHD. So GHD is a, a primarily an engineering firm and we have been engaged by the Australian government to prepare a feasibility study uh, in order to uh, design water supply and wastewater system upgrades or rehabilitation. So we are currently in New Air for two weeks, our design team. Our design team uh, has four members in it, myself, I'm the team leader, uh, and we have Tony Couchy, who is our project director and hydrogeologist. Michael Syred is uh, representing our engineers as a wastewater and water engineer, and Marcus Howard, who's uh, representing our WASH. Um, yeah, so we are here for two weeks to speak with all of the, all of the public, really, uh, in Niue. Uh, we may have technical expertise across a wide range of, of water sector skills, but we don't know Niue, so that's what we're here to understand. Since the arrival on Monday this week, the team have held meetings with several villages and will continue to meet with the rest of the villages. They have also been talking to other stakeholders in the community, including government agencies, and finding out more about the status of the existing water and waste infrastructure on the island. Yesterday we had the, the enormous pleasure of meeting with the New Air Council of Women. Um, we have went out to Liku to speak with the community there. Um, and we've been to Hakupu uh, and spoken with some members of the village there, although we will be going back on Sunday. Um, we've met with Director Environment, Met Service. Um, so really we are getting a very integrated cross-sectoral picture of what the water resources sector looks like, from pipes and tanks and bolts and pressure gauges and, and all of the hardware, all the way through to uh, community communications, community needs, um, with particular emphasis on the special needs that our elders need in uh, their homes, uh, that women particularly face in their homes. Um, we will also be meeting with the private sector, so we really need to understand how tourism operators, um, how hospitality, how some of the commercial enterprises uh, use water and, and will be wanting to grow into the future as well. Okay. Now, from those meetings that you held, what, what were some of the issues or some of the 
the the points that were raised by especially those in the community and and from the National Council of Women. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, lots, um, but uh, as I was saying yesterday, it's great to have everybody's uh, concerns out out on the table and out in the air. But it's also really great to hear everyone's got some idea of a solution um, to to fix that. What we've heard a lot is obviously when the power's out, the water's out. Um, and this causes, uh, uh, you know, an increased stress on households, particularly if there are elders, if there's people with disabilities or if there's children or someone is sick. Um, and it's just, a, as, as we all know, it's an additional strain having to fetch water when there's no power. So that's coming up a lot. Um, we're also hearing that there's um, a real concern about the availability of water for emergency situations, so fires in villages. Um, we're also hearing that there's uh, pressure issues at various parts of villages, um, obviously typically where houses are further away from the tank and the pump, uh, where gravity's not uh, in their favour. Um, and another key one is also hearing that uh, communications, around, like an integrated communications, may not always be present. Uh, it's a bit of a stop and start, depending perhaps on projects that are coming either through, say, Department of Environment or Utilities. Um, so these are just some of the key things that are coming out. But what's great about it is that we're hearing it from all different sectors. So for us, that's a sign that these are the priority concerns people are coming up with. A key part of the project is designing a wastewater system and to improve the current system, which has been of a cause of some concern for local residents for many years. Emma Newlin explains what their team has learned thus far. So that's the, the other half of our um, investigations here, is we know that a lot of the septic tanks are very old or very ageing. Some are so old that they have no bottoms anymore, some are cracked. A lot have been sized incorrectly, which is a really common problem. Uh, and just given the geology of Nui, the rock, um, it's hard for uh, some septic designs to work properly with proper dispersion fields, etc. So we're looking to see where there are, again, this hotspot idea, where there's like clusters of tanks that aren't working correctly, um, and what would be the solutions to those. We also would love to hear from community ideas around, well, thoughts and feelings around what is a good uh, septic treatment system uh, at, at a, a sort of municipal level. So we're interested to understand um, how people feel around different options, which is either um, separating the sludge from the liquid and reusing both of those in different ways. Obviously, they're treated before you use them. Um, but they can be used to grow vegetables or fruit plants, etc. Um, so we are looking at a, 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 an improved centralised uh, treatment system for that, um, rather than the current disposal system, uh, which itself um, can cause public health concerns. For Australia's High Commissioner Louise Allerton, the focus on water and wastewater is about resilience and helping New Way and the people of New Way have access to safe drinking water, but also to improve resilience to the changing climate. For me, you know, where, where are we aiming for and why water? Um, you know, it affects everyone. Um, but I think we know that it's a sector that's only going to become more important um, into the future with climate change and as da disasters become more frequent, um, we know that water I is a really vulnerable resource um, and so we have to start thinking about how we make water resources more resilient into the future. So really what we're aiming for is to make sure that Nuez water infrastructure and wastewater infrastructure is, is ready for the coming decades and then in 20, 30 years time it's resilient to that, to that changing environment. Um, so we know it's, it's vulnerable to climate risks, we know it's vulnerable to disasters. Uh, bushfires, as Emma mentioned, has been a topic that's come up a lot this week. Um, and, and also human risks, um, so you know, rubbish, wastewater, um, chemicals, um, fertilisers, all of those things um, pose a risk to the, ground, to the groundwater here. Um, so that's what we're aiming for, we're aiming long term. Um, Australia's been involved in the water sector for a really long time in New and, and this week I've learnt more 
Um, I think some of the first bores that were drilled 50 years ago, it was an Australian company that did it. So we've we've had a really long involvement um, in new air in the water space. We haven't done much for the last 10 to 15 years, so I, I almost think of this as a coming home um, to a sector where we've worked for a long time and on a pretty successful partnership and, you know, looking to forward to take that um, take that into the coming decades. The full interview with GHD's Emma Newland and Australia High Commissioner to Niue Louise Allerton will be on Radio Sunshine's News of the Week radio program tomorrow morning starting at 11am. The work on upgrading the roads from Hikutavake to Hakupu is progressing well according to the project manager Zhuan Zhuan Zhu. On Wednesday morning he took BCN, uh, BCN News on an update tour of the project explaining that in addition to the 46 kilometres of main roads that the China Railway First Group are working to renew, there will be three car parks to be built, one at the uh, International Airport, one at the New UFO Hospital, and also one at the Scenic Butterfly Resort. Here's more. According to the road project contractor China Railway First Group, there will be also uh, four sites where there will be concrete road instead of asphalt. Concrete will be used in locations where there is a lot of heavy machinery at work, such as the entrance to Sir Robert's Wharf. The project, which officially started in April this year, involves several key stages of two main roads, the western and southern lines. The western line is the 11 kilometer of road from Higutavake to Alofi. The southern line is, fro- is the 20 kilometers of road from Alofi to Hakupu. Five interior roads will also be renewed and sealed, including the D line or 1.5 kilometers from Alofi Central to Niue High School. The E line of 6.4 kilometers from Tapiu to the bottom of Tamako Donga Hill. The project will also build two new roads in Alofi, the R1 line or stage, with 2.8 kilometers of roads which start from the power station at Tuila to the intersection at Toa, and the R2 line from Kaimisi Junction through the Lalukafika track. The road project is scheduled to be completed by October 2024, which will include the installation of 32 culverts or drains, 92 traffic signs, 134 streetlights and footpaths in Alofi, as well as 245 metres of guardrails. The second research expedition by National Geographic, Pristine Seas and Niue's local team from Fisheries and the NOW project are this week at Beverage Reef. In the team is Janam Hopotoa, who has been able to provide an update from Beverage Reef and on his social media. Before the team departed last Thursday, BC News spoke to Janam Hopotoa about working in marine conservation. Janam Hopoto, who works with the Niue Ocean Wide Project, was one of three Niueans who were the first to dive at the Antiope Sea Mounts last week. He spoke to BCN News about his experience on Antiope and being part of the research expedition. It's amazing to be part of this expedition, uh, being the first one for Niue Island, um, and to be part of the free locals, Niueans on board, um, as part of a big team of wonderful scientists as well on board the Argo. Uh, it's super epic, very emotional as well, being able to um, touch the reef. Like I said, it's being um, it's sort of like touching a piece of home away from home, but just far away. Um, so, yeah, it's such a true honor and a wonderful experience of a lifetime. So this is just the start of the journey and um, looking forward to um, the rest of the journey. And this also goes to show that we have something very special that we look after in, in our um, waters here for future generations to come. So it's very valuable and very important. Janam is back out at sea at Beverage Reef this week with the research team, including Lo Noang Atawa and Darren Mangatungia from Fisheries and the head of the NOW project, Brendan Pasisi. Hopotoa was able to provide an update from on board the research vessel MV Argo a, a couple of days ago. Janam Hopotoa is one of Niue's young marine enthusiasts and marine conservationists. He has a strong passion for the ocean and our marine biodiversity. We asked him for his advice for young people who are keen to work in marine conservation. My advice for um, those who are interested in in taking up marine science or just uh, have a passion for environmental um, conservation or sustainability, just go and do it. It's, It's super epic. I mean, this is not only just something for us now. It is something that we can sort of build 
um, for future gener generations to come by caring for it. And also, if you're very passionate about uh, the ocean and what it provides for us and how it will sustain us for m many years to come, um, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of things we can do. So, um, yeah, just do it. Just go out there, have fun, as long as you're passionate about it. And um, a lot of awesome opportunities out there. It has been two months since customers can walk into a store and purchase eggs off the shelves. The eggs shortage on the island is caused by supply issues in New Zealand, according to the manager of the island's largest supermarket, Swanson's. Uh, Amanda Peter told BCA News, unfortunately, the other, only other local supplier of eggs, Tansy's Poultry, can only supply the resort, bakeries and eateries on the island. Swanson supermarket uh, manager Amanda Peter told BCN News that they have been finding it difficult to order eggs from New Zealand since their supplier in New Zealand removed caged eggs and supplied only free-range eggs. Meanwhile, Tazi's poultry on the island is the only local business supplying eggs, but they can only supply the resort, the bakeries and local eateries and unfortunately don't have enough supply for the supermarkets. Swanson Supermarket is though hoping to have some eggs on the next voyage of Papamua cargo ship, but due to the high cost and unpredictable nature of air freight, that is not an option available to them at this time. Effective as of the 1st of July this year, the Broadcasting Corporation BCN has uh, stopped or ceased to provide services for Sky Pacific subscribers on the island. The decision not to renew the arrangement or the agreement with Sky Pacific is made so that BCN can focus on the delivery of TV New Air services and rebuild the National Broadcaster Studios to where it was before the fire of May 2020. BCN has been providing support for Sky Pacific uh, customers on the island for more than 10 years. The decision not to renew the agreement with Sky Pacific is made so that BCN can focus on its local t uh, TV New Air services. It was decided that continuing to provide support for the 20-odd Sky Pacific customers or subscribers on the island was also drawing on limited resources and staff capacity at BCN. BCN News understands that talks are ongoing with other local tech providers on the island to take over the local support for Sky Pacific subscribers. Sky Pacific is owned by Digicel Fiji and is based in Suva. A new high school last week signed a letter of intent to establish a partnership with a school in, China, in China's province of Zhuahe called Yung Wing High School. This uh, ag agreement is to foster global learning and cultural exchange. A press statement from the government said that the, a small delegation from Zhuahe Foreign Affairs Office were on the island last week as part of promoting friendly exchange between the city of Zhuahe and Niue. According to the government statement, a key initiative of the visit from Xiao Foreign Affairs Office last week was to establish a school partnership with Niue High School and Yungwing School, Zhuhai. The Minister of Education, Honorable Sonia Talangi, said that they are excited to embark on this transformative journey with Yungwing School, Zhuhai. She says that the vision is to create a community of learners who embrace diversity, foster empathy and develop a deep appreciation for different cultures. Through this exchange program, she says they believe the students from New High School and teachers will gain valuable life skills and create lasting connections with their peers from Yuwing School in Zhuhai. The school partnership aims to offer participating students and educators from both institutions the chance to promote cultural and linguistic exchange projects and enhance exchanges and cooperation between Niue and Shuhai. Despite the wet and quite cold weather last Friday, Niue High School completed yet another successful athletics event for the year. The event opened with the marching competition followed by the uh, speeches by principal of the school, uh, Charles Ioanni, and also a speech by the Minister of Education and Social Services, Honorable Sonia Talangi, who officially opened the event. After several days of competition, the overall champions for la from last year, Team Pua, retained their title this year as the champions of 2023.
The four traditional teams or houses who competed against each other was Langakali, Pua, Kieto and Moea. And they started their competitions with the marching in the morning. The marching champions for 2023 went to Kieto House with 218 points. In second place, Pua with 208 points. Third place, Langakali with 200 points. And coming in fourth place was Moea with 194 points. The track events included the 100 metres, 200 metres, 400 and the 4 by 100 metre relay. Field events included javelin, discus and the traditional tasika for the boys and the olo for new for the girls. Minister of uh, Education Sonia Talangi in her speech acknowledged the support of the Department of Environment in sponsoring the sports uniforms for the new high school students. Minister Talangi also announced that next year, the sports uniforms of all the schools on the island, from Krish to New High School, will be sponsored by the Environment Department of the Ministry of Natural Resources. The Ministry of Natural Resources and the Government of Niue for sponsoring the, school uni the sports uniforms for this year. And also, ladies and gentlemen, for the ability to sponsor the sports uniforms for all our children from Krish to primary school, to Newey High School next year. Friday last week was the culmination of several days of competition for the students of New High School in search of the coveted overall champion house. That title, overall champion of 2023, is retained by last year's champions, the Poor House. After winning 33 golds, 31 silvers, and 38 bronze medals, and in second place, is Langakali with 27 golds, 20 silvers and 18 bronze medals. Coming in in third place is Team Kiato with 24 golds, 36 silvers and 18 bronze. And for the soccer football fans on the island, courtesy of Pacific Corporation Broadcasters Limited, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 will be available on TV uh, New West Pacifica Channel, Channel 3. And TV Niwe, uh, this program, Pacifica TV, uh, is uh, funded by New Zealand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. The FIFA Women's World Cup games continue with Game 5 tonight between Spain and Costa Rica. Then tomorrow, Friday, from 7.30pm until early Saturday morning, Game 7, Zambia against Japan, followed by England versus Haiti at 10 minutes past 10 tomorrow night and on then uh, early Saturday morning game nine between Denmark and China will start at 20 minutes to 1 a.m. And that's our bulletin of BCN News for tonight. Join us again on Tuesday next week for our bulletin in Wangahau. But before we leave you tonight do remember to visit Halamahanga on Saturday morning and join in the fun and festivities at the annual Alofi South Village Show Day. Until next week, you have a lovely weekend. Good night and a fun.